Okay, so I'd like to give some friendly advice here on what you should know before you progress. You see so often on game development forums, there's some newbie that needs help. And it's not because he doesn't understand the game logic, it's something stupid, like he doesn't understand how to pass a pointer to a function, or he doesn't know how references work, or something like that. I, there is a, there's a huge difference between being at day 18 of Sam's Teach Yourself C++ in 21 days and actually being good at C++. I've seen people who are like, oh, I know what, how to use arrays and functions. I'm ready for a game. No, you're not. Here's a small list I've made of the absolute minimal that you should know before you even bother with APIs and video games and stuff like that. These subjects are kind of C++ based, so if you're using a scripting language or whatever that handles these internally, don't worry about it. But for the rest of you, I recommend knowing arrays, pointers, references, dynamic memory allocation, object-oriented design theory, data structures, all control structures, and functions and subroutines. All right, now that every one of you should be competent in your multi-purpose language of choice, or at least you all better be, you get to make another choice. How much of this game are you actually going to make? Are you going to use a pre-built game development library which aids in development, has functions already written for you to do certain things? Or are you going to write your engine entirely from scratch just using things like SDL, OpenGL, Direct3D, things like that? One of these is obviously a lot easier, but you're using somebody else's code, you know? Maybe it's not as good a learning experience. Alrighty, for those of you who are choosing to go with some sort of pre-built library for your multi-purpose language, you should know this is definitely easier. It's, in a lot of cases, the smartest thing to do. And it, it's really a matter of going out and finding what you need. For example, there's Ogre 3D to do 3D rendering. XNA is um, Microsoft's deal. Things like that. They have built-in functions for, for example, an RPG library or something might load a sprite sheet split it up into little tiles for you so you don't have to worry about it. They have built-in functions that are made for games. You might not have to worry about doing your own collision because the library handles it for you. It might greatly simplify rendering, all, the, all those sorts of things. So you go out and you decide which libraries you want to use, what you want to use a library for. Is it going to be rendering, physics, AI, that sort of thing, and then you integrate it in your system. Well, I can't really go into detail because there's literally dozens, like a hundred of them, I don't even know. I did find a really cool website that links to them and I'm gonna put it, I don't know which side, but on one side. And it has a, a list of libraries based on topic, you know, maybe a general purpose, you know, SDL, Allegro, uh, graphic based ones, physics, things like that. And you can go through and look at them, read them, uh, and I recommend you do that. Alright, for those of you taking this approach, this is only for the hardest of hardcore. Basically, you're deciding that you don't want to use a pre-built anything, any sort of game logic you want to write yourself. The only thing you're going to be using is your language and the API or interface with the hardware. So, let's say I'm using C++. I go out, I either get something like Allegro, SDL, OpenGL, DirectX, Direct3D, something like that. And then I'm writing all the logic for the game, everything in the engine from scratch. So I'll use the sprite sheet example again to illustrate. Where the guy using the game development library might just pass a little function as a little sprite sheet, and it takes it and divides everything into neat tiles. You actually have to write that function yourself to divide those into tiles. You might actually have to check your own collision against objects. You'll have to write your own physics system, things like that. And it's the way we're going if you watch the adventures in game development, that's what we're doing. But you should know it takes a lot more time, a lot more effort. It's only really recommended for those of you who have, uh, I don't know, less of a social life, maybe no girlfriend, I'm kidding. But just bear in mind, it's a lot more work, it's a lot harder. It'll definitely take you a lot more time to do this. Mm-hmm.
concludes my basic how to get started. I think, unless you're retarded, you should probably have a pretty good idea how to get started. And if you didn't get anything out of the last portion of this video, just, just go buy a book and forget it. You'll be alright, I'm pretty sure. If you're not, you probably just need to refresh yourself on your math or something like that. Or maybe choose another profession like garbage pickup or McDonald's. Always, They're always hiring. Something like that. But everything from this point on is going to be advice for me. I've been doing this for about five years, and um, I think I have some things I could share. Helpful advice. If you don't care, if you think I'm an idiot, just leave now. You don't want to see this ugly face. Goodbye. But the first thing I'd like to say is if you honestly wish to get into the game development industry, if you want to make this more than just your hobby, you should probably go with the hardest approach I just mentioned. Just go get a multi-purpose language. Well, actually, more specifically, go with C or C++ and do SDL, Allegro, OpenGL, Direct3D, something like that. Because those are industry standards. Everything else, like your Blitz Plus, things like that, those are good. They might get you a job, but they're not as... Obviously, you're not doing as much work. And in the actual game programming industry, you're going to be using C and C++ and taking that approach. But, yeah, I thought I'd mention that because I know a lot of you guys... Your passion is to become, become actual game developers, not just hobbyists. So keep that in mind. Alright, if you watched that prerequisite video I recommended, my how-to 1 through 3, you'll already know where I'm going with this, but teams suck. Really, I don't endorse them. I don't even like them. I hate everybody on my... No, not really. But... A team is very complicated. Before you can even think about joining a team, starting a team, being in a team, anything like that, you have to make sure you're good enough to keep up with the other people. The other people are good enough to keep up with you. And then it's already rare enough that somebody's self-motivated enough to teach themselves to program, do art for a game, anything like that. You have to make sure they share your vision. They're not complete jerks. They have to carry their own load. It's just there's a lot of drama involved in it, and you really need to know what you're getting into. At first, for your starting games, which I already recommended in the last video, should be things like Pong, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, things like that. I don't care if you disagree. That's my opinion. And a lot of people go with it, and it seems to work for them. But when you make those games, you don't need a team. Just work alone for a while, and then when you're good enough, you can start asking other people to join you. But make sure they're close friends with you. And make sure that they understand where you're going with this. They understand your vision. They understand how much this means to you. Because I can honestly say I've lost friends this way. Our last graphic artists, um, they weren't really doing the art we wanted. We just didn't feel like they were doing as much for the team or game as we would have liked. And we had to kick them off and... They've been some of my best friends for about, I think, three years, and I haven't spoken to them since, so... And if you're watching this video, which you probably are, what the hell, man? Email me or something. Let's hang out. But yeah, keep that in mind. Teams suck.